this is going to be one of those videos again where I'm going to get in trouble for saying something that is unpopular opinion. Maybe I should have stopped filming. Hmm. Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist on this channel. I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants. And in today's video, I had an awesome video suggestion from one of the fellow subscribers, Bryn. Bryn, if you want to say hello, please do in the comments down below. But she actually sent me a website to a local topsoil slash soil dealer in her area and she was asking which, which ones I think would work best for her garden setup and why. And then she just made the suggestion that she thinks that this would actually help a lot of people, which I think is actually very true. So I'm going to be looking at a company based in what I believe is Washington. What does WA stand for? Washington, it's called Vern's Organic Topsoil and Bark. And we're gonna be breaking down the different soil types that he sells, the different compost, manures, all that stuff, and determine which ones would work for you or which ones may not and what each use for these products are. If you have a company that is similarly set up to Vern's website, please send me the link. I can do as many different ones, reviews of this as you guys would like. Now, the reason why Vern's website is really, really nice is because he has photos which really gives me a good idea of the tilt and the structure of the soil. Um, websites that just tell me what's in it isn't a great indication as to what that soil looks like or how it's going to perform in a soil system. So I'm gonna slide on over here so we can have the screen up here so you guys can see exactly what I'm looking at. And we're just gonna go through all the different types of soil and what each one is used for. So I wanna add that this is really common, really, really common. Um, all the ones that this Vern's Organic topsoil and bark carry are found throughout North America, probably the UK as well. And these are the very classic soil types you get for your landscaping work. So the first one we're going to look at is mulch. And I'm just looking at uh, Vern's mulch here and it's fine with some wood chunks in it. So it says fine screen compost uh, with larger pieces of leaves that discourage weed growth as the mulch continues to age. It'll provide slow release nutrition, which all we already know. Mulch can be a gardener's best friend, etc., and so forth. So it's just a standard mulch. And I actually like this mulch. It is a bit heavier than what a typical mulch would be that you would grab at like the Home Depot or in a bag, a typical like wood bark mulch, which his statement where he says it blocks the sunlight, which discourages weed growth is true. So because it is a finer mulch with some bigger pieces in it, it will block out the light. So it will be better at weed prevention, um, judging from this photo that I'm seeing. Now this mulch would be really, really good for a sandy soil or for a sandy loam soil, which is the other type of soil that he sells. It will not do well on a clay soil. Um, the reason being it is a bit too heavy for clay and you may end up with a little bit too much water retention. So with a clay soil, we want to rely on as much evapotranspiration as we possibly can get out of the system. And with a heavier mulch that doesn't allow for wind movement off the surface of the soil and for penetration into the soil, this mulch will not work. Now he has other wood chip type mulches, those ones would work. So the next one here we have is called steer grow. It is a, a third steer manure and then three quarters sawdust. It's cooked and composted. So because it's cooked, it will be weed free, like he says, and it will be a soil conditioner and it will release nutrients. Now the sawdust in there um, may be an actual additive as a byproduct that he gets from his wood chipping business, or it could be also some hay that comes from just the natural fact that it's steer manure, because steer manure typically will come with the bedding as well. So that may be the case there. I like the, th the fact that it is a mixed amendment. This is important. If you get straight composted manure 
with no sort of carbon in it whatsoever. You are putting a ton of nutrients on your crop, most of which will be leached within that first year. A lot of it won't stay suspended in solution, but when you have three or two thirds of that being sawdust, while you think that's a waste of money, it's really not because of that carbon, it's going to be able to hold on to that nutrients. So whenever you see straight manure, the alarm bells should go off that you need to mix something into it. Now that could be anything carbon. It could be peat moss, coconut coir, sawdust, straw, literally leaves, anything carbon wise can be mixed into a manure or a heavy duty compost and it will help act as a bit of a battery and hold back some of that nutrients and actually support uh, microbial health and just a healthier so soil in general because carbon is a huge building block to soil aggregates. So this is a good mix. I like that it's not pure manure. So the next one up is organic fine prep compost. And I want you to note that organic portion at the front. This gentleman who runs this company knows what he's doing. He even says in the description that it is certified organic by US Composting Council. Council. This is important. The reason being is because organic can or has been turned into more of a term that is loosely used. And organic certified or something that if you wanted to grow produce for a market garden or you want to sell officially organic food, you would have to make sure that the products that you're putting into your soil are certified organic. So his steer that he had or his mulch that he had, you notice how he didn't say organic or certified organic. It is because there's regulations as to how to make steer manure that's organic and how to make mulch and compost soil that is organic. You cannot have any pesticide, fertilizer in any of the processing. So if those cattle were eating grain that had used Roundup or glyphosate, fertilizers, anything of that nature, that manure, while it is organic in the sense that biologically it's organic, is not certified organic because just due to the trophic system, how things build up in the trophic system, there is the potential for fertilizers or herbicides to be trapped in the fat, which then would be excreted through the manure and then placed in the manure, which will then be placed on your soil, which in theory could end up into your soil system. So I like how he prefaces that it is certified organic. And if you guys want a truly organic garden, you need to make sure it is certified organic. And I can get into exactly what that means in a separate video, but that word is so loosely tossed around, um, it's insane. So people will say like the bio teas, um, fertile, egg fertilizer, banana peels, they'll say this is an organic fertilizer. It's not, you cannot legally sell the pro produce made from that system and call it organic. That's going to upset a lot of people, but that's the honest to goodness truth. In this, he states that there's no chemical contamination, there's no biosolid, and it was even put through a 3-8 screening process, which is very, very fine um, for something of this nature, and it shows up in the photo. You can see how fine that end product is, and that is ideal as a soil amendment that you're going to mix in with the soil itself. Now, this manure would not do well in a no dig or a top dress scenario without a wood chip or a mulch on top of it. The reason being is because it is three eighths screened, it will blow away and you will end up with manure loss because it will just take off in the wind because it is so fine. However, that fineness is ideal when we're talking about more microbial activity, more nutrient cycling, more bioavailable nutrients, quicker, release and return on investment, that is the, the fineness or the prep that you want done to a compost. So I'm going to skip the lawn mixes. There's two lawn mixes on here and I'm going to just pass over those for right now. That would be probably a separate photo. I wanna focus mostly on the garden side right now. So we have organ, Olympic organic compost. And if you notice here, he does not say it is certified. So this could mean one of two things. First off is that there's 
biologically organic material that may not necessarily have been harvested or produced organically, meaning herbicides and pesticides. Fertilizers were used on the products that make up or the, the biological side of what makes up this compost. Or secondly, you would have to ask Vern. He's going through the process of getting this compost certified organic legally, which can take in Canada, it can take anywhere from three to five years. But in uh, the US, I'm not sure on what your guys' laws are, but there is an audit process where you do have to sell stuff technically as conventional um, and non-certified for a period of time while you're still producing things organically. And that is just the natural audit process that has to take place when you're using organic or you're trying to market things organically. So he's either in two states, he's using biologically organic stuff to make up this compost or two, he's in the process of getting certified for this and he's just not yet there. He's still in the audit phase. So he says, this is a mix of green waste, food waste and manure. It's a versatile material. It can be worked as an uh, into amending garden beds and also works as a light top dress for gardens, pots, and flower or bar garden beds and flower pots. And again, it is nice and fine. It probably, I don't think this was um, screened. It doesn't look like it's screened. There are some wood. There, it looks like wood in there or material. There's nothing wrong with this because it is a bit thicker, heavier material mixed in with lighter material. It's not gonna blow away as easily. So yes, it's going to work better for top dressing. Also gonna work really great for amending into the soil, mixing into that soil system, because as those larger chunks begin to decompose, you're gonna end up with porosity um, and aggregation in the soil, which is ideal. Now he doesn't, what he doesn't say in here, and what's not said is not necessarily a critique on the actual product, it's just not said. There's nothing in here that says how it was composted. So was it hot composted? just raw compost, just regular rotation, how, like what process did it go through? Because that is going to tell me what the weed seed level is going to be in this system. And the problem is, is that, um, hi. So the problem is, is that you need to solarize compost to a degree. I know I don't advocate for solarization on the soil because it does, you know, kill off that bottom you know, however many inches of microbial activity is, that is just a fact. Now with compost, because the outside of the pile is uh, usually pretty cool, the inside of the pile is more of the hotter section because we're always rotating it. We always have very alive microbes. And so that rotation of hot to cold means that we just, we always have colonies that are reproducing and because it's so light and airy, our microbial activity is just, it's always up there. We're always getting more of it. So I'm not too worried about hot compost in the sense of denaturing or destroying microbes. I actually like hot compost for the sole fact that it does prevent weed seeds. And because this is a green compost and it contains green waste and food waste, my concern is things like powdery mildew, different types of harmful fungus. Ella, if you have an Ella in there, that's dangerous. You want to get rid of that as well. And then just weed seeds and things of that nature. So that'd be a question for Vern. Again, he may do this. This is a phone call to Vern. I'm not going to call Vern because I'm in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, Canada. And uh, he's in Washington and I don't want to waste a poor business's time by calling him and saying, for a YouTube channel, would you like to answer some questions? The last, there's three more. And the last three, I left to the end because I already know the last three are gonna get me in trouble. Let's start with the one that gets me in the least trouble, okay? Yeah, the garden mix. Let's get into the garden mix. Okay, so garden mix. Um, what does Vern have to say about this? It's a fine prep organic compost native soil, so native to Washington, and it is screened and screened sand. Um, it's a rich topsoil, high in organic and fertility. 
garden mix is good for vegetable gardens, lawns, berms, raised beds, and specialty products. So fine prep compost, very important. The reason being is we're trying to remove any sort of wood chips or huge hunks of wood. The reason for that is because wood in situ in soil will lock in nitrogen. Now, mulch won't. Mulch isn't going to lock in nitrogen and it really won't affect um, your soil nutrients because it's just touching that surface layer. So the only nutrient effect it's going to have is just that little tiny layer where the mulch contacts the soil. But when you have a garden mix and it's mixed throughout the entire system, this is when we run into issues. This is where we run into nutrients that is being stored to help decompose those wood chips because it's actually the microbes that are using that nutrients to fuel the fire to decompose these biosolids or these solid pieces of wood. And, and because of that, we don't want that in the system unless it is heavily aged wood, then it is fine. I mentioned this in the hoagaculture video, for example. So what I would do is with this is it it's literally meant for anything you could use this in raised beds like he said and you can use this in a no dig this would work great in a no dig i like the addition of sand because that means that you're going to have nice drainage i like the uh, fact that there's native soil in there so i think that that would be more of a loam and it would probably be just middle of the road loam. I wouldn't think it would be a sandy loam and I don't think it would be a clay loam. I think it would be literally a loam. So the textural triangle right here, he's dead center in the middle on that, I would assume with his native soil selection. Again, that organic compost mixed into that native soil with that sand is a perfect mix. When I'm talking about no dig and the ideal system for no dig, it is this garden mix because we have remnants of the cation exchange capacity, we have soil aggregates, um, we have moisture retention. It's just, it's, it's the ultimate. When he says garden mix, this is what you want to go with. Now, I would still mulch this, depending on the area that you're in. If, if you're in a cooler area, you may not need to mulch for moisture, but I would definitely mulch to reduce topsoil loss, or I would cover crop it. And then the other thing is too with the garden mix side is that I would advocate for you guys ensuring that you are adding a manure or compost yearly. And a really good rule of thumb is about two inches um, top dressing on the whole thing. You don't have to incorporate it. You just have to put it on the surface of soil, two inches done zo. So this would work for a no dig setup in the future. Um, it would work for a garden that you decide to till, all that stuff. Now you are gonna end up with weed seeds, uh, partially because I don't know if the compost is solarized. I don't know if it's a hot compost. And then again, the native soil factor, you're going to end up with weed seeds. Weed seeds can get really, really deep into the soil profile. And I actually had someone ask that question before, um, how far down can you find weed seeds? And I was digging a soil pit in a grassland, a native uh, Great Plains grassland, and we were finding seeds, weed seeds, from hundreds of years ago, like just right in the soil layer. So weed seeds go deep so you are going to end up with some in there now whether or not they're going to be viable is a whole other story unto itself but you can expect weeds and that's just normal that's a normal it means that your soil is healthy right that's all that it means okay so this is in Vern's organic topsoil now topsoil if we look at a soil horizon or a soil profile we have or O horizon, which is our organic horizon, which consists of our leaf litter layer, which could be, you know, grass roots, that sort of thing. And it's loose and fluffy. If we were to touch it, we could just quickly dust it off. We might be able to pick it off a little bit. And then directly under that is where we hit topsoil. So topsoil, depending, can reach, you know, two inches or in a churnism, it can be three feet. It just all depends on the soil that you're from. So when Vern is talking about topsoil here, he's talking about a actual soil 
that doesn't have a ton of porosity in it and it because it's obviously been altered and tilled and played with a little bit we have no aggregation and we just really don't have any form to this soil so he says it consists of loam sand and certified compost it's all purpose it's great for berms and other projects it has a higher for higher nutrient content refer to our garden mix so what he's saying there is if you want more fertilizer and more nutrients up front and in the future you're going to want your garden soil however what he doesn't mention in here is that his topsoil mixture based on what i'm seeing here just looking at this profile it is a battery and this battery is going to hold nutrients like no tomorrow however you can expect poor results not poor but just mediocre results out of your garden for approximately the first three to five years depending on how intensively you decide to utilize it. As you add compost and manure into the system, as you add more organic material into the system, you're going to add nutrients as well because it is shapeless right now. After we set it in place, we put some crops on top, we get those roots penetrating down into the system. What we'll end up with is aggregation and tunnels where oxygen can flow for both microbes and the roots and water and kind of all that stuff in between so this soil will take work while you can use it in a garden it will take work i think it's also really important to note is is that this topsoil mixture isn't going to compact what you see is what you get for the most part you may get some slight compaction with that garden soil over time you're going to get mega compaction so that level is going to go down as you have the weight of the snow watering just gravity in general you'll notice that that level will go down and you'll probably actually have to top up your raised bed with this topsoil mixture what you see is for the most part what you get you can expect some shrinkage but not much however you are going to get better aggregation in this soil meaning you're going to have less compaction in the future and you're going to have a soil that is more self-reliant in the long term topsoil i like this organic mixture um, i like that the fact that it is alone and it has some sand it has some compost i think that this would be great for ground beds and it it may even work in some cases for that bottom half or that bottom layer of a raised bed. The next one is a sandy loam, straight up sandy loam. And now this is where I get hesitant. And a horticulturist will, if you're watching this, you'll weigh in, um, Pro Hort Co, if you're watching, weigh in on this and give me your thoughts and the reasoning behind the sandy loam push. But um, this sandy loam, is something that a lot of horticultural companies, soil companies that sell this stuff, landscaping companies will try to market to you. They're gonna to try to get you to get this sandy loam because it is so inexpensive. It works great for a base in both your lawn or your garden if you top it off with some garden soil. So it's good in that sense now there's nothing wrong with this it's straight up they're telling you it's sandy loam the issue i have is that that some of these companies some of these landscape companies actually will try to give you a sandy loam with some compost or some manure in it and they will tell you it is garden soil and Vern's mix is an actual garden soil, but some of them try to cheap out by adding in a ton of sandy loam. I personally was burned by this. I personally have this in my raised beds, and I will tell you, it does not work. It is horrific at holding any sort of moisture. So if you're trying to conserve water, if you're in a hot area, if you're doing raised beds, um, even slightly raised beds, if you get a garden mix, make sure they are light on the sandy loam side because you will have an impossible time of keeping the moisture in that system. 
The other thing that sandy loams tend to do is if they are more on the sandy side and less on the loam side, so depending where they sit on this textural triangle, what percentage they lie in, you will end up with poor aggregation and poor soil formation even after years of waiting for it. So I personally have a soil right now in my raised beds that I absolutely freaking despise. Now this was purchased as a gift for me so I really can't complain that much. It produces just fine but it could be so much better and while I don't know how much was paid for it because my grandpa would never tell me how much he paid for it despite me asking and begging he would never tell me but if it was marketed as a garden soil and they sold it as a garden soil oh my goodness so that is something that you guys need to watch out for now something you can do when you're at these companies and you want to see if it is a sandy loam or how much sand it or how much sand that that garden soil has is simply take some of that in your palm have a water bottle with you just give it a couple drops of water and literally just mix it around in your palm if you notice that 33% or more of that mixture feels gritty it feels sandy that is too much you only really want a quarter or less of that to feel gritty the rest you want to be compost manure silt clay that sort of thing the exception to this is if you're in a high moisture area or you're in an area that doesn't drain well or you have a high water table these are the scenarios where you would use a sandy loam. The other scenario would be if you have a clay bottom and you're stacking sandy loam on top, then that's fine. You can have a more of a sandy mix, but unpopular opinion, I've been burnt. I've seen people burnt many a times over with the sandy loam um, being used heavily in a garden soil so that is something to watch out for if you are buying soil in bulk just do a quick little test on it and see see what it feels like texturally in your hand what percentage you could guess for that to be um, another really good test is whether or not you can make it into a ball garden soil you should be, be able to make it into some sort of ball with a little bit of water if you can't make it into any kind of ball and it just literally falls apart it is way too much uh sand way too much sand in the system you need to compensate with a compost a manure maybe a little bit more silt even you could request to have added into it that sort of thing so overall Bryn I think you have an awesome company chosen here I personally for your system you could do a hybrid of either that organic loam or you could do a garden pure garden mix keep in mind if you're doing a pure garden mix or just even the regular organic loam you are going to need to top dress that with compost and manure every year you may want to think about um, adding a mulch to the top of that to prevent both water loss for our, for, via evapotranspiration if you're in a drier area or just for general topical soil loss if you want to mitigate that as much as possible. The other method is to use uh, cover crops such as the sign that's not behind me right now such as the one video I did on cover crops. That is another option for you to do intercropping, high density cropping, that sort of thing. Because it is a new soil and you just recently added it into the system, you're not gonna have a ton of aggregation. So blowing soil is very natural after you literally just transported it into the area. So it is something to watch out for. This video is already getting way too long. I'm gonna let you guys go. Let me know if you guys are buying soil this year, what you've decided on getting and what you're using it for in the comments down below. Also, do not forget to tell me what your zone is. It helps me make my videos just a bit better suited towards you guys. I'm losing my ability to speak, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to bed now. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.